The Paradis Files. Welcome to this short documentary film about Grey Eye's upcoming opera project, The Paradis Files. The Paradis Files will be an opera based on the life of Maria Teresa von Paradis, referred to throughout the documentary as simply Teresa. An 18th century Austrian composer and musician who lost her sight at a young age and was subjected to a number of invasive treatments intended to cure her. This film provides an insight into the creative process used in the making of the piece and the ideas that inspired it. During the film you will hear from the creative minds behind the work. Jenny Seely, director, Selena Mills, creator and librettist, Erilyn Wallen, composer, Nicola Weronoska, co-librettist, and Andrea Brown, music director. They will explain their motivations and ideas directly to camera from their homes. Jenny Seeley sits in a white room, a framed print of a woman behind her. Selena Mills sits against a backdrop of bookshelves. Erilyn Wallen sits in a white room with a large clock in the background. Nicola Weronoska sits in a room with a golden sun sculpture behind her on the wall and Andrea Brown sits next to a window in front of a bookcase. While they are speaking, there are black and white still images on screen which provide a snapshot of the rehearsal process, close-ups of singers and interpreters engaged in performance or the director delivering feedback, for example. The action moves quickly from one speaker to the next. I will introduce each speaker by name. The explanations of the creative process are interspersed with black and white footage from the workshops and rehearsals which took place at the Grey Eye building in Hoxton. In the rehearsal room there are two male and three female singers, along with two sign language interpreters. They are all wearing everyday clothes. The performers and interpreters are working in a makeshift performance space in the middle of the rehearsal room, while the librettist, composer and director observe and comment from the edge sometimes coming into the performance space. There is also a pianist at the edge of the performance space. The main singing voice you will hear is that of Bethan Langford, the singer who is playing Teresa. Jenny Seeley, director, at home. So, let me start at the beginning. Two years ago, of course, over a glass of wine, I met with Monica, who's the chief exec of the stables, and Bill G. And those, those two together run the International Festival in Milton Keynes. And Monica looked at me and she said, Jenny, how do you feel about opera? And I went, I actually really love opera. I am deaf. I find it almost impossible to hear but there's something about a challenge of trying to get yourself in and around that music, that style of music. I did an opera years ago called Mad Meg, a tiny little opera for young people in special schools, and I loved it. And then we've just done a contemporary opera outdoors. But what Monica was offering was the opportunity to do something indoors in the stables, a brand new opera and... I mean, this is total serendipity, because weeks before, this woman, who's a journalist for The Spectator, came to interview me. She's a visually impaired woman. We did the interview. We got some cheese and biscuits, so it's all about food and wine with me. But Selena started telling me the story that she wanted to develop about this incredible blind composer called Teresa von Parody. And she showed me all the work that she'd done on, on the research she'd done. So I said, Monica, I have an opera for you. And what I love is that Monica just went, well, okay, let's program this. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's program it for the IF Festival. So, so many people, like a deaf, a deaf director, opera, what a risk. But Monica didn't see that as a risk. She's with me in that challenge. She's another disabled woman who absolutely gets it, gets how you move forward, you smash those barriers. So what we're doing is exactly what Teresa did all those years ago. She smashed barriers. <laughs> busy street. Collins 
bus drives past the Grey Eye building. We have a licence to play. Rehearsal room. Licence to pull it apart, put it all back together again. Licence to ask questions. Challenge each other. Challenge, challenge what this is all about. Um, yeah. So this morning, it's very much for music. And for me, as a deaf person, I need to get that music into my skin to find out how I'm going to hear it. And I, I, I do have two sign language interpreters who are incredibly skilled and they've been part of this process for a long time. The Sartaloo is about how do we put sign language with the music and that might be about you signing as well. And looking at the different, different ways it can happen or not happen. Selena Mills. I found Theresa von Paradis when I was researching a book on the history of blind people. I was looking for female blind role models. There's nothing sort of pre-19th century. And then I was looking at musicians and I came across her and I thought, why on earth has no one looked at her? She's amazing. Erilyn Wallen. The music I write is often eclectic. And in this particular case, uh, I'm also trying to capture the sense of the the period in history the 18th century she wrote a huge body of work she toured europe she uh, played with mozart haydn salieri she was phenomenally successful in her lifetime and and yet somehow she disappeared into the corridors of history theresa von Paradis studied with mozart and originally i was going to avoid direct references but actually Mozart did, it's understood that Mozart wrote a piano concerto for Teresa. So I'll have snippets of that coming in. And it's actually quite a fun way of giving a reference point. Nicola Weronowska. The libretto starts at a fairly late point in Teresa's life when her playing and composing career is over. And she has established a successful music school for blind girls in Vienna. It's such a powerful initial moment to see Teresa at a time in her life when she is, we believe, happy, independent, and we see Teresa's mother unexpectedly arrive. And her arrival is a catalyst to revisit the past. Andrea Brown. I think one of the main challenges has been around how to, to run our workshop. We are really breaking new ground. We're still trying to find and develop a space in which we can play with music and action and singing, audio descriptions, signing, all of these things which really are going to come together in this quite innovative production. But when Bethan starts, she plays the piano, lots of her music. Let that just settle for a bit. Yeah, so this is 29. You need to rest. Save your strength for tonight. Such a long time since I've played. It is only for your students. An audience is an audience. Shh. Lays the piano. Just in her music. The doorbell goes. Gerda goes to open the door. So we must see that when she's playing, she really does hate to be interrupted oh, okay. yeah. as well. That has to be incorporated. A woman is crouched on the bottom step. She has a stick. She's old and frail. 
Although you see her now, you're shocked at her frill, which is the calm. She's a total cow to you and to Teresa. The maid. Gerda. Or lady. Baroness from Haberty. I was wondering if she really was a year away from the end of her life. Is that truthful and factual, or is that something she's saying to engender a reunion? May I come in? I think it's quite a difficult decision when she says, may I come in? Um, I think there's a bit more hesitation. Okay. It's not kind of, of course, it's more you, you being torn. She knows there'll be fireworks. Somebody wanted to have an argument with me. I was practicing the piano. I was generally, I couldn't be bothered to argue because I was busy practicing. You really do. You're in the zone. Your mother. May I see you? Should I bring her to you? No, I don't want her here. I thought it was like in in mother's own time. Yeah. Tell her to go. Yeah. So we really extend yeah. that moment, and it's all linked with her. That focus on the piano, but that feeling of this. Everything started to hurtle forwards. Yeah. She's here! She's here! No. The Baroness! Your mother! Also, I think that the piano is also a place that's her home, a place of psychological safety, isn't it? I think it's quite good at this point to not give away everything. Because it's the beginning of their relationship. If I go, no, tell her to leave, yeah. then you know everything. Whereas it could be a slight tremor and, you know, tell her, tell her to go. Well, can I suggest, just a thought, maybe she's losing her sight. Oh. So she can't recognise Gerda, yes. which I think is an interesting, you know, relationship yes. with her daughter. Yeah. And may I see you? about it is that we're not just talking about disability we're talking about what it is to be an artist a creator whether in the 18th century or the 21st century and what life involves whether it's a relationship with your mother or whether it's who you fall in love with these are themes that we all carry within us and I think what I love about Teresa is that she really did not see her life as a tragedy I mean she was really out there like you know getting out there having affairs you know meeting lots of people and investigating the world. Although the story is very much Teresa's, we made the decision to put three women at the centre to give voice to a wider range of female experience. So we created two other female characters, Teresa's mother, Hilda, about whom almost nothing is known, and her maid, Gerda, who is entirely fictional. The thing that drives it uh, is that the emotion of the music. Each character is, is really finely drawn in the music. It's not just a question of characters having a motif, but they often have their own key centers, their own rhythms. And so I think that's why I love writing opera so much. It's, you're trying to bring all these characters into this world of music, and then the music itself can be another character. Electricity. <laughs> Electricity and light. Hot stuff, cold stuff, cold stuff. Bleeding. Bandages. Extraordinary. How many signs that all together? We're going to look at this soon now. Yeah. It will feel like that. Um, a bit weird. But just give it a whirl. The music of the heroes of the court. So, Buffett, do you mind if I get an edge here? So if it's cutting, so you cut down the bleeding, the bandaging, pincers, light. Sorry. But it's it's just this invasion of stuff mm. that's happening to her. Yeah. And I think what was very interesting is taking the themes that Teresa had gone through herself, and then as a group we were sitting and discussing it, and we all had experiences of this, even now in the 21st century. On a personal level, I felt very emotional. As a disabled woman with dyspraxia, I identified with the idea of fixing, 
that somehow if I learn how to tie shoelaces or improve my handwriting, I will be fixed. These days, I find it really interesting how um, people often say, oh, well, um, you know, you can get an app for that and you can, you can, can't you get some special software as if it would fix everything. And the thing is, we can't fix everything. Sometimes we have to live with what we have. in February, which was the second uh, of our workshops, was a real turning point for the whole creative team. Jenny really had the room. It felt like a playtime. It's been exciting to work with the music and Erilyn. The process of the musical composition, the trust that we need to negotiate. We all come together from such different viewpoints and yet actually agree on exactly how we want Teresa's life to be expressed. And what's so wonderful, we had Beth, who will be Teresa in The Real Thing, it was absolutely electrifying for me to see her perform because that is the voice, well, it's a fantastic voice, but also the way Beth can hold the stage means that musically I could hear what she was doing with my music and it's, it's unbelievably exciting to think now I know exactly what, I can, what music I can give her. It really does help if you have people who have shared lived experience, but don't consider it the only thing that defines them. Soon. 
What we will create, the layers and layers and layers of artistic aesthetics about accessibility will mean that this is like something completely new and maverick, of course, it's grey eye. But we, we need our partners on board and to trust us, to trust us in the same way that Monica trusts me to do my job. And I will do it because I'm beyond excited about it. And we're doing little bits of rehearsals here and there. Damn COVID. Oh, I just desperately want to get my cast and have a wonderful Sarah Playfair with us, helping me cast, have a really diverse, eclectic mix of people and to do opera like it's never been done before. That is a challenge. Oh my God, we're going to do it. Credits. Director, Jenny Seeley, MBE. Music. Erilyn Wallen, CBE. Musical director and conductor, Andrea Brown. Librettist, Nicola Weronoska. Co-librettist and original idea, Selena Mills. Casting, Sarah Playfair. Dramaturg, Bill Banks-Jones. Documentary singers, Mimi Dalton, Omar Ebrahim, Bethan Langford, Natalie Raybould, Ben Thapper. Documentary pianists, Murray Hipkin, Stuart Wilde. Documentary sign language interpreters, Vicky G. Dare, Caroline Richardson. Documentary filmed and produced by Daniel Saul and Rachel Davis of R&D Studio. Commissioning partner, Monica Ferguson, CEO and Artistic Director of The Stables and IF, Milton Keynes International Festival. Commissioning producer, Bill G, creative director of IF, Milton Keynes International Festival. Producers for Grey Eye, Kate Baden and Hetty Shand. Please help us to continue developing the Paradise Files and take it into full production. We can't make this piece without your support. Donate at justgiving.com slash grey eye. Thank you. Commissioning Partners Logos Grey Eye Theatre Company, The Stables at 50, IF Milton Keynes International Festival. Websites, greyeye.org, stables.org, IF Milton Keynes.org. Tweet, hashtag The Paradise Files.